Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's start with copy and angle. What's this thing? Go away. Okay. Copy and angle. Copy and angle. So this is more trickier. More trickier? Is that a word? So say I have an angle that has uh, arrows on the end, here's an angle. Let's start by copying an acute angle. So we're going to copy this angle right here. Alright? And the way you do that is the same way you start by making a ray. Okay, so I'm going to start by making a ray. We'll make it a different color over here. And um, so here it is. I know it's not at exactly the same angle as that. That's okay. Doesn't matter. All right. And now I'm going to find my compass. Compass, compass. Okay. And I'm going to go over here. And I am going to put the point of my compass over on this vertex. I guess I should start my angles over there. Okay, so I'm going to try to flip this guy upside down. Flip him upside down. Yours doesn't have to be up there. And I'm going to put my point on the vertex right there. And then it doesn't matter how wide you have this set. Right? It can be small, big, or whatever. What you do is you make an arc on the angle that you drew. Okay? So you make an arc just like that. Everyone do that? Got it? Got it. Okay. So now, what you do is you take your compass, leaving the angle that you have it set at. So mine's at 140, whatever that means. And you don't change the setting on the compass. Okay? And you drag like this so that you will have another arc on here, okay? just like that. So it's the same distance from here to here as it is from here to here. Got that? Yeah? Everyone do that? Okay. Now you can change your compass setting. So I'm going to take my compass, I'm going to bring it sideways, and move this over here, and I'm going to put the vertex uh, well, actually, what you should do is put a point like over here, okay? And I'm going to put my, my point of my compass right over there. Uh, compass can I should just have my compass on here. It's okay. I know it can. And now I bring the point onto that point, and I go such that this is exactly touching that point over there. Alright? Like that. Got that? Yes? No? Maybe? So I need to make sure that this is over here and that's over here. So basically you're measuring this distance across that angle. And then you make a little arc right there. Like that. So you cross that with there. And then you pick up your compass and you move it such that this point goes right there, okay? and you make a little, you don't change the setting, it's set at the same width, and you drag your compass, drag it like that, okay? and then if you did this correctly, now you take your straight edge, right? take your straight edge, here's my straight edge, you have a straight edge, which is like a ruler, except it doesn't have measurements on it. And I, I make this vertex go through that point, and you should have made two angles that have the same measure. This is angle, we'll call this angle A, and we'll call this angle B, and we'll say that those two things are congruent. And in fact, if I took my compass, watch out who I am. I mean, not my compass, my protractor, Protractor. I take my protractor and I put it over here. Uh, you should get, let's see, I'm lining this down here and this angle, if I drag this thing over to here, I think I could just, oh, no, that's not what I want. I want to drag this line. There we go. No. I drag 
Greg just on your video. How many degrees is that about? Oops, I need to add them on the So it looks like that angle is about 28.5. So now if I take my compass and I move it down to here and I line this up over here, they appear to be about the same, right? So they're both about 28.5, so it work. So that's how you copy an angle. And you would use exactly the same technique to copy an obtuse angle, okay? So if you're copying an obtuse angle, I'm not going to do it because it takes me a long time with my tools. But if I were if I were to copy an obtuse angle, I'd start again by making a ray like that, and then I would take my compass, put my point here, and make an arc over here, and I put my point here, and I make a similar arc over here, making sure that this is wide enough so that when I draw my other ray over here, it would match. And then I take my compass and I put it here and here, and make a little mark, and then I put the point of my compass here, and make a little mark, and then I would draw up this way. And if I did it right, I should get two angles that are congruent. Now I'm a bit way off because I'm just kind of faking. But, but that's what, how you do that. You're talking about two cents. And then you can add angles. And I'll let you figure out how to do that. If I, if I took this whole piece, whole angle, and put it on top of this one, I could make two angles and an angle that double that. Something like that. Okay? As we're doing this, I'll show you how to make equal at our triangle. Did you say, don't learn how to make equal at our triangle? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, you know how to do it already? So by the way, all of these things are based on congruent triangles which are hidden underneath. Okay, that's why they work. Because there's triangles, and I'll kind of show you when we do the perpendicular bisect. So we're going to do an equilateral triangle. Construct, construct on equal. It's really easy. Equilateral. Triangle. Okay? So to do that, you start by making a segment, not a ray, but a segment. If they just say any equilateral triangle, unless they say an equilateral triangle to be given side length, in which first you'd have to copy the top. I don't want to do an arrow on you. Okay, so, so I'm going to make a segment. So say I want to make an equilateral triangle with this as its side. You take your compass. Uh, compass, take your compass, 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 compass. And you, once again, I'm going to start from this side. I measure how far it is from here to here, using my compass as a measuring instrument. Good? Now, now what? I want to turn my compass, so I know that this, what do I say that angle is? 251, even though it's not really, oh, because I'm going back. I want that angle to be 251. Don't watch me. I'm not changing the setting on my compass. I'm just changing this to the 251. Okay, so really what I just did is I just, uh, my compass opening hasn't changed, right? And I put one point over here, and I make a mark, an arc over here, up top, okay? like that. Now keeping my opening the same, okay? keeping my opening the same, I have to do mine differently than you guys do yours, because this compass is kind of opening in there. I'm going to keep my opening the same, I'm going to make that angle 251 again, 251. There we go. And I'm going to drag this like this and cross those two parts like that. So that this opening that I did from this end and that opening that I did from the other end, they're both the same, right? And because, okay, and I put a dot up here, right? Put a dot up here. 
And because these are all radii of circles that we that would be congruent, when I connect this dot to that dot, okay, and this dot to that dot, I should get a triangle that is equilateral. Alright? And now not only do I know how to make an equilateral triangle, but I need to know I need to I know how to make what type of angle. Uh, you, and how many degrees? You probably already know that the angle of the equilateral triangle, right? For all six degrees. So now I know how to construct not just an equilateral triangle, but a six degree angle. See? And then if I teach you how to bisect that, and you know how to construct a 30 degree angle, and bisect it again, you know how to construct a 15 degree angle, and so on and so forth, without ever measuring anything. So that's how you do the equilateral triangle. Questions, Rob? Okay. All right. One more. Okay. And then a couple of conjectures for you. Okay. So the next one is called construct a perpendicular bisector. Construct the per and this one seems really complicated, but it's really easy. Perpendicular bisector of a segment. So we're going to start by making a segment. Okay? Here's a segment. Start by making a segment on your table. Okay? It's real similar to an equilateral triangle. Well, not really. It's not similar. Okay? Start with a segment. So basically, what I want to do is cut that in half. Exactly. Okay? And I want the line that I cut it in half with to be at 90 degree angles to it. So the way. I do that is I take my compass again, toolbox, toolbox, why do I keep doing my toolbox there? Okay? And I'm going to put my compass on one end of the uh, segment. And then what I have to do is I have to stretch my compass so that it is more than halfway across. Okay, so this is about halfway. I want to make it a little more than halfway. Okay, maybe about three quarters of the way across. And you want to bring that kind of up here somewhere. Okay? And what you do is make a little part up here. Like that. And as long as you're at it, I'm looking at this 202, you want to make that same mark down here. So I'm going to come down here with my compass. How am I going to do this? All the way through. Well, let me bend it. So I want to make that angle 202, 202, 202. Good. Okay. And now I'm going to drag that. I'm going to make another arc down here that kind of looks like that. And I got to make, now if you want to, it, it's messier, okay? But you can just make this one big arc like that. See that? Okay? That's what a lot of people do. Make that whole big arc over here. And it doesn't need to cut over here. That's just coincidental that it hits that point. Now I'm going to come to the other side. Okay? And put my compass over here. And keeping my same setting, which is 202. Okay? No, you go on the end point of the segment. So I'm going to set this again to 202 but on this end, okay, so your compass should stay the same. And then I drag this like that, okay? See what I did? Okay, so you have the same opening from both sides. So you put your compass on this end point in a segment, and on this end point in a segment, and these two things have to cross, okay? Now, it just happens to be coincidental that I went exactly three quarters of the way that it hits over here, it doesn't have to hit over there. Okay, that's just kind of a coincidence. And I don't want to do it again. Hold on, I'll help you in a minute. And then you put a point here, and you put a point there, and you connect 
those two points with a line, okay? Doesn't have to be a segment with a line. So I'm gonna go from this point through that point through this point, okay? And there's your perpendicular bisector, okay? And so if you did this correctly, not only should this angle be 90 degrees, but if I took it and measured it, that segment should be congruent to that thing. Okay? Is everyone able to do that? I can help you at this. Yeah, so you do your compass. And some people have a hard time with this, and other people it has to be over halfway. Everyone's able to do a perpendicular bisector, okay? Now, but let me give you a conjecture sheet now because I want to talk about um, these first couple conjectures. C5. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Over here. Over here? Are you from Mexico? Or you are. Oh, I forgot to stop my recording. Who's that kid is talking? So, so. What I was going to say is this first conjecture is driving me. Sometimes we get stuck and want to do this and draw a line. Things, you know. but that first conjecture says C5, perpendicular bisector conjecture. If a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it is equidistant from the end point. So this is a conjecture that's kind of useful to know. And this is kind of why they make kites with two perpendicular things like that. Any point that I put on here, okay, the distance from here to here, whoops, it shouldn't have arrows on the board, okay, and the distance from here to here, whatever point I pick is always going to be the same. See that? This is the same as this. If I were to draw a line from, from here, from this point to the end point of my segment, and from this point to the end point of my segment. It's another way to draw, yeah, if you want to draw an isosceles triangle like that, that'd be a way to construct an isosceles triangle. That's why it reminds me of the Hunger Games, okay? Why does that remind me of the Hunger Games? I don't know. Because, if you, uh, where's my recorder? But the converse, remember, is what you get when you switch the if part and the then part around. So if I were going to sketch this, so if I were going to sketch this, the original statement looks like this, okay? If this is true, even though it doesn't look true, if this is true, then then, okay, then this is true. You understand that? Okay, the converse says that if a point or if two points are equidistant from the end point of a segment. So if this, if I drop in this, if two points are equidistant from the end point of a segment, then those two points lie on the perpendicular bisector of that segment. So what that says, if that is true, then this line has to be perpendicular and it has to have cut that in half. You understand? So if it's true going this way, then it's true going in reverse, and that's what the converse says. Okay? So for homework, your homework is page 